So, what do we got here today in Act 1? Might be an upgrade card. I could also see boss swapping, looking at these options at a glance here. Looking at the Act overall, I do see a No Elite Path. And I also do see a Hexaghost. And all of these things make me like boss swap a bit more. Curious. Upgrading Bash is not a horrible start for Clad. It's a solid improvement in the starting deck. Definitely makes the first two fights a lot better. Upgraded Bash is, in particular, very useful against Jawworm and Cultist. Boss Swap into Tiny House. Let's go. Max Health is fine. Doesn't feel that good, but it's fine. A value a bit less in Hexaghost. Take 18 damage for Transform 2 is simply too risky. If the Transforms are bad, you're going to end up losing health, so you're stacking health loss on top of health loss, and that results in a very swift death. Boss Swap is also somewhat high risk, high reward. You get an extra heckin' boss relic. Although we lose the 6 hit points per combat. I think overall it's a pretty powerful option, especially when your other starting options aren't that good, and you have high versatility in your act, and this definitely feels like a good example of it. So let's do the boss swap, and start with a Snekawai again, two for two. Chunt with the Prime Sub and the 26 months of support. <clears throat> this is the second time we've gotten a Sneko start from the boss swap, um, very recently. And that's great news. What path do we want? We could always opt into the Burning Out Elite after this shop. So I'm thinking we go here. This is the green option, and there's also Fight the Burning Elite option. With Snekawai, we want to get some high-cost cards, get them upgraded, and then just use those really strong cards to sort of crush the game. There is a three Elite path on the left that we could maybe take, but actually, what about this one? Ooh, I like this one. And then we get a shop relatively early. We can buy an expensive attack if we see one. And if we don't, that's okay. We can also buy a potion if we didn't get one from the first two combats going into this first elite. We get pretty much the same number of rest sites unless we're wanting this one. We get one more Elite, and we get the Burning Elite. I like this Red Path a lot. Sneko's start should be very good against Act 1 Elites in general. So let's go Red here. So all of our cards will cost 0, 1, 2, or 3 with equal probability. And that often averages out to being able to do a lot of stuff on our turn. Wow, that was a really good turn. Six cards played that turn. Not too lousy of a first combat. Although I'm not in love with the Twin Strike with Snekawai, as a first pick, it's just good enough that I think we shouldn't skip it here. We don't know what we're going to be offered in the future, and we need to take some damage to get through upcoming fights. So I don't think we're allowed to ignore this. I think we basically have to take something here. So, Twin Strike is perfectly fine. Probably just Bash Strike the Spike Slime, take two. It's a little bit of wasted damage, but that's probably fine. Should you always take something first fight? I would say almost always. There are situations where you're going to want to skip all three of your first choices. For example, if all three of the first choices make the starting deck worse, then you should probably skip. Like, this is this is worse than Twin Strike, for example. So, this one we skip. Mm 
in general, skipping puts you behind pretty quickly uh, in the first card awards. So your starting deck alone will not be enough to do all that well in the later combats and elites of the acts. So you must get some cards added quickly, or you'll have a hard time. No love for Iron Wave here. Not with not with Sneko Eye. I'm looking for stuff that says two cost. For the most part. Two upgrades for the price of one. Eh, sure. Ah, oh, we do get Bash upgraded. That was super worth. Pretty happy resting at the rest site now. Quite a bummer that I cannot afford Impervious here. We could consider Shrug. Inflame's not too bad. It would be nice to have a potion for this elite. Michinator says, with Barricade and Corruption in play, is there ever a reason to not just play all your block cards? I don't think so. Not, not unless you can get more block by waiting. For example, if all your Feel No Pains aren't in play, then you'd want to wait until they are and then play all the block cards for the maximum total amount of block. Yeah, it's, it's definitely hard to find an always situation in Slay the Spire. As there are some pretty unique game states you can get into. <laughs> Let's see, we don't have enough for remove potion, huh? But we do have enough for potion shrug. Potion shrug seems okay. Okay, let's do that. It's really basic, but it's not too bad. Get him, bash plus. So we only got to play one card that turn. That's okay, because on average, we'll see turns where we get four or five cards played. This one's pretty good. For example, Strike Bash Shrug. You can't do that on three energy normally. Okay, good. We didn't get a potion here. Bludgeon. Okay, okay. Okay. Now we have a deck. Commence the bonkage. Yeah, now we're cooking. We guarantee draw bludgeon by turn two because there are 14 deck cards in the deck. We draw seven per turn. So it's time to slap. Oh my. But your face, sir. That's uh, all of the damage, don't you see? Hey, that's too expensive. Oh well. 27 plus 14 is not 48, right? It's 41. Okay, take 12 is not the best, but not the worst either. Neither of these potions could have changed the outcome of this fight in any way. But we find an elixir, which I'm happy to not pick up. We also get an oddly smooth stone, meaning our blocks are now a little bit blockier. And I'm wondering if a Sever Soul is okay. It's decent damage, and it will delete all non-attack cards in our hand, which can get rid of burns or other nonsense. Yeah, at least we heal six, right? 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 No, it's okay if we rest one time. I have an upgraded bludgeon. I am perfectly happy to just snooze here so that we can fight the Burning Elite without worrying. Let's take the Sever Soul. Skip the Elixir. And sleep. My tea is too hot.
Hmm, bottled bludgeon? Or blue key? Blue key seems reasonable. Bottled bludgeon is kind of fun, though. Heck it. Give him the bonk. That's right. The bunkening. Oh my. Now these are some uh, amazing choices. Uppercut, clothesline, shockwave. Clothesline's not going to happen here. It's either shockwave or uppercut. Uppercut does damage and does weak frail, or weak vuln, rather. Shockwave does it to everyone, and it lasts longer. Probably Shockwave. Shockwave also becomes free if we can find corruption. Shockwave. That's what I've decided. I think I'm going to use the Cultist Potion on the Hexaghost, although with Bludgeon, we probably don't even need it. I think we're fine. Get bludged. Exact lethal. I like it. But none of this actually kills it, huh? Defend, I guess. Not too bad. Singing Bowl. Very good with this Nekoi. We can now skip cards for two max health. And we're often going to do that. Although I am going to click on Whirlwind so that we have a way to deal with multi-enemy fights in Act 2. The good bronze probably better than Cultist Pot against the Hexaghost, actually. Oh well. It seems fine. A bonk. Heart of Iron's even better. Armaments with Sneko Eye can be okay if we upgrade it, uh, upgrade all the other cards in our hand. Or we can just gain two max health here, which is, I think, what I'll do. Forget the Liquid Bronze. We don't need help for Hexaghost. Let's fight Lagavulin, but with extra strength has the same fate as the last one, which is to get absolutely bonked. I think resting was actually unnecessary. Well, then we draw this. And I don't feel that way anymore. No, it was a good idea. More or less. That's a good amount of health for the boss. Perfectly safe penguin. Thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the cozy sub club. Ceramic fish ain't a whole lot. That's all right. Unupgraded true grid, huh? What's my upgrade? Shockwave? Shockwave. Or whirlwind. Actually, we should probably upgrade whirlwind going into next act. 
We've got Bash Plus for Hexaghost. And a Fear Pot, too. Am I ever upgrading this True Grit? I think I'll just uh, skip it. Since we have the Singing Bull. Against this boss, we simply need Bonk a few times. Shouldn't be too bad. Could consider using the Fear Potion to get vulnerable on this first one. It feels like overkill. I think we're fine. Hey there, Timmy Tama. Grats on reaching 820 with the clad. It's definitely a uh, tricky time, those high ascensions, no matter what character you're playing. There's no kill like Overkill. That's right. Alright, we'll never miss a Super Bonk again. It's even free. Bonk. GG. Alright, we're clear through Act 1, even without the bonus health from our Burning Blood. Got a good pile of money. Unfortunately, we didn't get the good rares for Sneko I. No second bludgeon here. Could consider Juggernaut. Could definitely consider Juggernaut. But I'm also pretty happy with two max health here. How does the street command outputs what I tell it to output uh, Struggle Muffin in terms of which characters it displays. Currently we're playing Ironclad, so it'll only tell you what the Ironclad is. There's no uh, input you can use to let you know. So if you take the Juggernaut, we're going to expect to lean more into the Smooth Stone, hoping to find blocks, uh, Feel No Pain especially. It's nice to have another damage source. Works well with a Heart of Iron. Okay, you know what? I'll take it. I see enough use for this. It's a good way to get some damage scaling, which currently the deck has none of. Just a big bonk scaling. So in the absence of anything else to take, I'll take it in the 9 gold, sure. And we're offered Philo Stone, Slaver's Collar, Black Star. Hmm. I think the deck does want more energy. Sneko Eye decks often do. Philo Stone feels less painful than normal, because we do have a high propensity for turn one KOs with our guaranteed bludgeon. A Thrail with the Prime Sub in the three months. Blackstar might be tempting, but I'm not sure we do all that well in Act 2. If we only have three energy for this Whirlwind. I could maybe be convinced to take Slaver's Collar, but I think we do better enough in the hallway fights with Philo Stone over the Collar that I'd prefer Philo Stone here. What would a balanced relic be that provides metallicize? Be like... I think the, the Hermit modded character gives you a relic. I think it's a common relic for two metallicize. Maybe an uncommon or rare could provide three. I think that'd be balanced, Abigail is. Two or three. Okay, let's take the stone. Yeah, brass tacks, that's what it's called from uh from downfall. Okay, I'm always more comfortable in act two if I can do shop and an upgrade before the first elite. So I'm liking something like this. And then we can maybe fight two more here. Get two rest sites. Which is the best we can do. There's also a path up the left here. We get the shop in the middle. And the elite before the first fire. I don't think I want to do that. I think we want to go this way. Green path here. And that means three combats to begin the act. That shouldn't be too bad. I think we do very well at fights. Overall. The bonk. 
Good rule of thumb in Act 2 is 100 damage in 3 turns. Can you kill the Chosen before it does a super nasty attack? On turn 3. Whirlwind is just shy of uh, KOing here, unfortunately. This will take three. Having four energy means we're way less likely to be stuck playing only three, uh, one, one three energy card on our turn. Either we're, we're much more like, likely to be able to play at least two cards that are important to us. All right, this is another tough one. Can we get the the turn one that looks good here? Yes, we can shockwave and bonk your face in, which is almost a kill. And then we can block for a full block. Well, minus one, actually. Take one damage from the shelled parasite and then just crush it. That's a great fight. One damage shelled parasite. It's definitely hard to do. Do we ever take a Perfected Strike? It's a lot worse than Bludgeon is. I think we just take two max health here. Doesn't seem to be that good of a reason to not... Uh, to take unupgraded cards at the moment, unless they're really, really powerful unupgraded cards, which are probably going to be rare. Two strikes is more damage than Twin Strike. Kind of funny, actually. Get him. Get squashed. Heavy Blade is back. Metallicize at least goes with Juggernaut, right? We take one Metallicize. I'm down for one Metallicize here. We are going to want an answer to the Collector at the end of, at the, end of the act. <clears throat> Whirlwind will help a bit with the minions. It's like Combust at Home. Yeah. Combust except it saves you health instead of causing you to lose health. I'll grab one Metallicize here. Do we transition into a Sneko pellet stack? With bottled bludgeon? I love that, actually. <laughs> Question card is also quite powerful with Sneko eyes. It helps us find bigger, more powerful cards. J Cheese, thanks for the prime sub and the three months of support. That's right, pellets can also do wonderful things against the collector. So sure, I'll take the uh, orange pellets. Definitely transforms how you play a deck with Sneko Eye. As we can now remove the confuse effect, and that is substantial. Might want to consider the pellet, uh, the flex here to go with the pellets. Like it with Whirlwind, just fine. Seems like a cool way to gain strength, and it's cheap. Sure, let's give that a try. The rest won't do. Could take another fight. Seems better than an event. Seems better than an event. Get two more max health. There is a bird nerd, but there's also a whirlwind. Also, just go Shockwave Bludgeon, huh? Hmm. I just Whirlwind. We're not getting the Chosen in time. Do 
the chosen to die. Telesize Strike would rid, rid me of the debuffs, including confusion, so I'd know what I was being able to do next turn. Um, actually, no, we could play Shrug Metallicize to do that. Or better yet, Defend Metallicize. That's a full block. Yes, and gets rid of the debuff. Okay, and then we always kill you next turn. So let's do that. Oh. Not too bad. And if Flex is a part of this deck, it feels like we want to upgrade the Flex. Especially alongside this Whirlwind. Root Reducer with the Prime sub in the 16 months. Mr. Gregor with four months. Thank you both. So again, a power, an attack, and a skill in the same turn causes our debuff to be removed. Power, attack, skill. Cute. Thirty-six or block for seven. Feels like we want to do thirty-six. If I was gonna skill potion, I should have done it already this turn. Let's just commit. Now I can use the skill potion. Trench, double tap, true grit. How much damage is bash, double tap, sever soul? That'd be 10 plus 24 twice. That's not enough. True grit is more block than entrench. Okay, just true grit then, I guess. Does having the orange pellets make flex into a good card? Yes. That's why we have it. Power one short. I can do strike, strike, defend, metallicize. We deal 15, 15, 5, 5. 40 total damage. Bummer. with my hit points. Peace Pipe. Can now remove cards at rest sites. That's okay. Lame Barrier with a Sneko Eye is probably good. It's just a good block card in general. And we can rest here if we're afraid. I kind of am, honestly. Although removing a strike is pretty spicy. I'm gonna do the old preemptive rest in Act 2. Get my health up. Acquire the Courier. Scoring a discount at the shop. That seems cool. And boldly striding forth into this fight. Bash and bludgeon different... Bird nerds here. Flex 
whirlwind kills them next turn. Yeah, we want more powers in general. Feel no pain is always a nice one to have. Offer Snekawai, huh? Hmm. Give up the career to gain an increased chance of finding rare cards. Rare cards are pretty strong with Snekawai on Ironclad. This is higher chance to find Corruption, higher chance to find Demon Form, higher chance to find Barricade. So that makes this kind of good. I'm down to lose Courier here. Let's do it. Now we get a gift. So we're dramatically more likely to find rares from this elite fight, for example. Pretty bad costs to lock in, but what can you do? Slightly less concerning. Very angry, apparently. All right, don't even play the whirlwind then. Be that way. Get a kill soon. Oh, they're so angry. Dear Gremlins, why are you so angry? All right, we're through the fight. That could have been spooky had we gotten attacked uh, on that penultimate turn there, but it worked out. But let's see what the rare chance says. Where's that displayed? Here. Says 58.7% from an elite, according to the uh, info mod here. We didn't get one from In Lost Gift, but we might have gotten rare cards normally, and we sure did. Impervious and Exhumer here. Yoink. Cool. So neither of those are credited to In Loth, but they were there regardless. The Golden Man. And dealing damage on exhaust is also spectacular. We're just one corruption away from this deck being very good. of supplementary damage now for this deck. So close. Not bad. Two more hit points, please. And one more elite. It's the Book of Stabbing again. This time it's personnel. Gonna keep the Heart of Iron. I think I'm gonna use Heart of Iron against Collector, but we'll see what the initial draw is like. We 
should upgrade the Juggernaut for Collector. Dreamcatcher's kind of underwhelming, especially when we've got Peace Pipe here. No rares. Three commons, huh? The gift that does not keep on giving. That's okay. It'll show up uh, with rare cards next act. And yes, I think we want to upgrade Juggernaut over removing a strike here. Because Juggernaut is going to be a lot of our damage versus the boss. This is a pretty tough boss. So I expect to have to use some resource to get through this fight. We also cannot purge our debuffs on turn one. Though at least we got a good cost for bludgeon. Okay. This is fine. We can even lock in four points of strength here by paying three to flex. Still worth flexing for three energy if it gives you four strength, I suppose. And you can full block for zero energy with the impervious. Do we want to save a power to clear mega debuff? Very likely. Yes, very likely. So we're going to go skill, power, and I guess I attack Collector with the Bash. Remove debuffs here. So we're no longer confused. And we no longer lose that strength. I block for 34. There is 38 incoming. Do I want to use the Heart of Iron now? Again, do I think I'm going to need it with this initial draw? Seems like we're okay. Definitely not a bad potion to hold on to. There's no longer any randomness in our costs. We've got a one cost bludgeon. I think we're okay. But we're less okay this turn. Definitely looks like Juggernaut Shockwave. I could do Shockwave Defend Defend, but without the Juggernaut in play, seems like a bad line. And then we have the Metallicize to clear the, the Mega Debuff with. That's right, card prices in the Discord pile are locked in because we are no longer confused, so we're no longer re-randomizing. Taking 22. Is that acceptable? I say yes. Okay, did not draw metallicize is the most important thing this turn. Kill you with a exhaust. Next turn could be bad, but we have the swift potion to guarantee we can power attack skill. We also did the Flame Barrier, so there might be a resummon here. Just a buff, that's good. We did not get the Metella's Eyes, but we're also not being attacked, so I don't know that I care. Don't think that I care. And we get a resummon. So, power, attack, skill. All of our debuffs are removed. Wow, very gentle collector. Didn't attack us one time after the buff. After the debuff, rather. We're through, and we kept our Heart of Iron. Excellent. At 71 bucks, we're offered freaking fiend fire or another bludgeon. Although I'm thinking with a feel no pain and a juggernaut and a Karen's ashes, it's super freaking fiend fire because 
each card will deal damage three times. Once is the base damage, once the Charon's Ashes, and once the Juggernaut proccing off the Feel No Pain. That's a lot of damage. Fiendfire does scale with strength, and yes, it's per card as well. Very strong card. You can also use Fiendfire to delete high-cost cards that have been locked in. Am I taking a Pandora's Box? Pandora's Box also gives... Uh, we're transforming eight cards here, so it would give an additional eight times nine. 72 gold is pretty sweet. That's a good enough reason for me. And our other options are Busted Crown, which is not that bad, I suppose, with the um, Singing Bowl. Um, but does make the in-laws gift kind of ridiculous. Let's take the... What's in the box? Put it back in the box, please. These are not really any better than the cards we used to have. In fact, the defense were definitely better than those cards. That's a pile of garbage, although Evolve could at least do stuff. Maybe. There's another Flex, too, which is somewhat noteworthy. Positive news, we can go to four Elites this act if we want to. Is that positive? Not sure, actually. Let's frame it as one. At least we have free pathing this act. Yeah, now we can happily Fiendfire. <laughs> Please, Fiendfire, for the love of heck. What have I done to my own deck? All right, nerds, prepare to get fired. You're all fired up. Bonking you. Play this, play Feed Fire. Good enough. Not enough block, you say. Yes, I swift pot here, I guess so. Is that even enough of a deal to make anything sensical here? Not sure. This exhausts four cards currently, so we get decent block. Decent AoE too. By shockwave it goes to nine by two. But I'm only going to block for nine. So I take nine versus if I sever soul, we block for one, two, three, four, 15. Take also nine, I guess. So I guess I'd rather play the shockwave than not play the shockwave. Bye, Magic Fish. Thanks for the 15 months. Good to have you here. not a good enough reason to add another one. No thanks. All right, how about you? Will you die swiftly and willingly? You will. Thank you. I assume so. Wait, Fiendfire Bludgeon's not a kill, right? This does 42, bringing you to 50. Fiendfire would do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. No, that would do 50. Right, this is 53.
That is a spicy card. Get in here. Trade three health for three energy. Oftentimes it is zero cost. What in the ungodly heck is this? Hello? <laughs> Help? Attack you 22, 34, 48 damage. 48 damage. You thought turn one Darklings was bad. If you thought turn one Jawworms was bad, look out for the shapes. Good lord. It's terrifying. Okay, Shockwave definitely improves our situation here. We can kill two of them, no problem. That's still taking a bunch of damage, though. Spooky. Unless it's Feel No Pain Severed Soul. Hold on. Um, that's only going to get one of them, right? Get one, two, three, four, five cards exhaust. We get 15 block doing that. And deal 15 AoE. Which means Severed Soul will kill the front one. But we can't Perfected Strike to kill this one. So we block 15, take a whole bunch. Better to just kill two of them and have them all weak, right? Shockwave, Bludgeon, Perfected Strike, Sever Soul. Seems better here. Unless you're telling me I can get even more kills than I think here. This will exhaust again. One, two, three, four, five cards. It's actually off by one. Um, so yeah, we can kill that. We actually get three of them, right? Okay, that's not so bad. Let's take seven. Seven out of 48 ain't bad, as they say. Karen's Ash is really putting in the work. This relic is very strong. Here's our first rare card from the gift. It's an offering. I'm probably just gonna take Sentinel Plus, actually. I'm gonna be honest, that seems awesome, especially with the Sever Soul. Just two of them, actually. Yeah, give me the Sentinel Plus. Offering is the big stinky. Uh, and we said we're going to this shop, right? Yeah, we did. Evolve and power through. In fact, I don't even need the power, the evolve because I have one, right? Yeah, we just have one. I'll take a power through. That's a good block card. I'll take a card remove. That's a good block card. The other stuff in this shop is very weak, honestly. Scragganoth joining the list of channel cuties. All hail Twitch chat. Let me see some waffles in chat for another illustrious member of the cutie list. Those who have spent so much time in the channel as to accumulate the required half mil of channel points. Yeah, scales ain't too bad. Scales ain't too bad. Scragganoth, such, such a pleasure to have had you in the stream for so long. Welcome. To the list. Just double check I spelled that correctly. Here we are. And Duragan with the Prime sub and the seven months of sub port. Thank you, thank you. Rackbar with the Prime sub and the ten months. And be Kaif, thanks for the Prime. Welcome, welcome. And Chunt, did you hear about the witch who named her brewing instrument? He's called Ron.
Should also be able to get in by buying 50 dad jokes. I, I do kind of like that, that route. Birth jig with a 41 months. Let's lose that searing blow. Actually, perfected strike is worse than searing blow, huh? That's sad. It's a sad state of affairs. Is it worth buying bronze scales? I mean, it really hurts the heart. That's kind of valuable. Good enough for me, I suppose. It's also one of our common relics that's most highly correlated with winning. So surely it must be a good sign. Oh no, they're back. <laughs> Not again. Ah! Why do you do this to me, game? Let's see. Jerks. Several Soul would exhaust three, maybe two. So Several Soul will just delete the base block. So I can bludgeon. Bummer to be slightly sort of short on damage here. I see a way to take 13. Using the liquid memories here. Don't feel like I have any better options. Double Bludgeon, Flame Barrier, Sever Soul. By my count, that leaves one of the Jawworms that you bludgeon slightly alive. Because without Sever Souling away the Flame Barrier, you don't have quite enough damage for Bludgeon and the Ashes to kill the middle guy. If we use Liquid Memories on the Flame Barrier... Actually, that does take less, right? We Bludgeon here. Flame Barrier, Liquid Memories, Flame Barrier again, block 26, kill the middle guy with Sever Soul. So we block 26, take 31, lose only 5 health. We deal 8 damage back to these nerds. Then there's two of them alive next turn, though, instead of... One, but I think with Fiendfire and Impervious in the draw pile, I'm not too afraid, I suppose. Okay, so Liquid Memory on Flame Barriers. Sounds better? Sounds better. Uh, and then we probably want to kill the back one, right? We have to bludgeon and Sever Soul it to get a kill. This we Sever Soul first. This does 22. Yeah, kill you. Okay. Yeah, we got both the Impervious and the Fiend Fire. Excellent. For days. Let me even get a potion back. That wasn't too bad. With Philo Stone in the deck, I super duper want to disarm to shave strength off of enemies, very notably the hearts. And uh, do I dare go through elites here? This is kind of scary. I do dare. First up, Reptomancer. Surely this won't go terribly for us. Hmm. Hmm. Ah, 
Adra Tains, thanks for the prime sub in the four months of support. Feels like we definitely want to use a power uh, energy potion here so that I can do flex metallicize bludgeon. I guess kill this one. Kill this one, I think. Hard to know, actually. Okay, well, that's terrifying. Whirlwind for two. And Impervious. That still takes a bunch of damage. Crypto, thanks for the 20 months of fun and counting. You're heckin' welcome. Fire seems like an next turn kind of thing. We don't get to put Feel No Pain in play, though. That's really scary. Bummer. We could also maybe do Twin Strike, Feel No Pain, Impervious, or Twin Strike, Impervious, Power Through. Strike Impervious Power Through is a lot of block, actually. We take very little. Let's do that. How do we get rid of the daggers next turn? With Charon's Ashes, hopefully. Yeah, or with Whirlwind. Unfortunately, though, we do get bodied by Repto. She chose to attack again. Bummer. Bummer. This deck kind of sucks, actually. That's what I'm realizing. Dang. We'll use this now. Needs to be at least six cards. Yeah, so we can go Sentinel, Fiendfire. Ambitious. I guess one elite was ambitious. Okay, we do live for now. And we get a lot of health back immediately in the form of a lizard tail. So that investment could well be worth. Do we want a demon form? Sort of, kinda? Sort of, kinda. We could find a Reaper because of the in loss gift, so I'm gonna risk it here. Take a demon form. Okay, let's keep going. Snake demon thing. Played uh, Silver Soul there. Okay, very good mall fight. Got through that with no trouble. So we can pick up two more hit points. And we know this is at very minimum not a Reptomancer. It's a giant head. 
That should at least buy us enough time to do some stuff, such as turn one demon form and purge the confusion, which is pretty good. Next turn is a really nice guarantee. We'll do it this way. Get him. The full wrath of the fiend fire. Juggernaut chipping in there, too. 150 damage from that fiend fire. You're wrecked, sir. Uh, I was hoping for the other stuff. 34 times 4. That won't be enough. There we go. Great fight. We get a fossilized helix, preventing the first instance of damage each combat. Now it's starting to come together. This might actually work out okay. Ah, and a corruption, which is, I don't think, from In-Law's Gift. I don't think that was In-Law's Gift proccing. But corruption is definitely one of the remaining pieces we need that makes all of our skills zero cost exhaust, no matter what the Sneko Eye says. go to this rest site. I don't want to lose the lizard tail. Tempting to go to this shop, but I think in practice we may just want to stop taking elites so we don't have to fight Reptomancer again. Let's see how this fight goes. Not again. No, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> card. This one is double tap. No. There's a limit of two of any one shape, Baron Fell. Likewise, the gremlins in Act 1, there's a limit of two fat, sneaky, or angry gremlins, and you can only have one shield gremlin or one wizard. Although I think Gremlin Leader can summon three wizards. Chaos with the 11 months of support stepping by from the YouTube. Do I have a rule of thumb for balancing my deck offense slash defense slash card draw? Not generally for offense, uh, but my rule of thumb for defense is that your deck should be one third block cards. That gives you enough block cards that you can pretty consistently draw at least one or two on every turn. Uh, but not so many that you draw only block cards, which is really undesirable. So you want to keep your block density, is what I call it, below half. I'm going to snooze. I want to keep this lizard tail intact. And oh, we get a feel no pain out of the deal. Sure. Seems good to me. And nine gold. Yeah, two-thirds drawn energy cards, and then one attack card that is just feed. Got an explosive potion. All right, I'll mess with this. Let's fight, Repto. I'm no longer as afraid of you as I was. Yeah, 
seems fine, actually. Perfect. Excellent fight. Get a letter opener, further adding to the AoE damage nonsense. And a limit break? We don't need that. Old Tor with a full year, our first anniversary, it's true. Thank you, thank you. Begin to fall. Lose Sentinel, lose Metallicize, or lose our very first added card, Twin Strike. Sorry, Twin Strike. The powers are our damage now. And here we have to recall. Okay. We might have some trouble against the Awakened One. Other than that, I think we're very good at boss fighting in general. And I don't expect to have too much trouble against these two. Although this opening hand is pretty sad. Sad enough that I might want to color this potion here. Happy to spend potions to get through these boss fights. We just want to get to Act 4 here with the Lizard Tail intact. Yeah, currently we're taking 13. Can't play a lot. I think I'm going to use this. Panic at the Disco. What do you got? Disco Vri. Take none. Keep buffer. Now that's what I'm talking about. Bad potion, my butt. It's 37 block for free. with everything being random cost, actually. Lose the buffer now. Keep the impervious. No. Use the impervious. Keep the buffer. Don't play the whirlwind. Now we use the buffer. Bummer. Playing Corruption isn't the worst thing in the world, I suppose. And I do want Evolve in play. But feel the pain of Evolve, Fiend Fire. Take a bit of damage on this turn. It's not too bad, though. That's why we had to play the Evolve.
Get in there, Juggernaut. GG. Cool. Okay, and we're fighting Time Eater, not the Awakened One. So I think we have a pretty easy time <laughs> ahead of us. Power, power, skill, power, skill, attack. No confusion for us. Let's see, 33 incoming. This block 6 goes to 15. This gets another 22. So we can full block, keep the buffer, or use the buffer on this. Let's use the full block right now. Remove the drawdown by playing another attack here. Actually, you have to lose the impervious to play two more cards. That's a bit of a bummer. Um, I'll just leave it on 10. We've got buffer intact. Yeah, we can just buffer this. That's fine. No problemo. Thanks for the slimes. Not quite below uh, half there, unfortunately. Ring Blow, Silver Soul, Whirlwind, Whirlwind. Yeah. It's also maximum damage. Riddance Time Eater. All right, we're on to Act 4. Two thump, two thump, two thump. A deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. I gotta say, this one became a little sketchy towards the end of Act 2, early Act 3, but I think we've pulled it together, and we now have a very strong run in Act 4 with uh, Lizard Tail intact, lots of money, and lots of health, which I'll probably be resting for a bit more of. We're missing 13 hit points if I rest. We get a card reward with a boosted rare chance, and we can gain two max health. So I'm resting. Heavy Blade Plus. That's actually pretty decent damage. Yeah, and nine gold if we take it. That's right. Yeah, two max health or nine gold, and I'm thinking we're going to take nine gold. We did not toke any cards with a Peace Pipe. We used the uh, Dream Catcher instead. Dark Embrace, my beloved. <laughs> Brimstone, my beloved? Anyone for Brimstone, Philostone, Heart? Anyone? Anyone at all? <laughs> Even having taken the... Uh, heavy Blade, that's really, really spooky. Nothing could possibly go wrong. Yeah, meanwhile, Tori is here. Tori looks pretty sweet. Tori can negate the additional damage from Philosopher's Stone in the Heart Fight. We could also consider Ancient Potion. I don't know about that. Heart of Iron, maybe. Tori's not bad. Anchor could save our Helix. That's true. We could do Anchor, Heart of Iron, Shrug. That's pretty tempting. Really like the Heart of Iron for the Heart Fight.
Okay, I think I'm sufficiently convinced. Let's see how this does. Heart's first multi attack with Philo Stone is 4 by 15. What a great turn one. We got Evolve and Corruption here. Holy moly. Lucky. Very lucky. Uh, I'm going to bludgeon you, actually. This does 8 to all, but I think I'd rather keep it. Draw 9 cards. Bloodletting because of buffer, so I guess we just turn around, huh? This becomes 11 by 4. Metallicize, burn won't make a difference here. Currently, we're taking 33. Heart of Iron saves 11 immediately. I think the Heart of Iron is better in the next fight, though. Could use the Energy Pot to kill the Spire Shield here. Probably also better in the hard fight. So take 33 here. Or no, 22, actually. Sorry, 22, not 33. That's much better. Take a hit, buffer, and then two elevens. And we can do feel no pain, power through, fiend fire. That's going to be lethal, surely. Wow, the damage. Because this does 12 times 6 is 60, plus a bunch from the ashes. Yeah, that'll kill. could be good here, letting us retain some block from turn to turn. Uh, and Lost Gift gives us one more gift. It's a limit break. I'll take the second Shockwave instead, thank you. And even though we weren't able to perfect that fight, I think 75 health and a Lizard Tail for 50 more health is probably more than sufficient to defeat the Heart here. Can do skill power attack this turn so we can remove our confusion, and I'm gonna do that to avoid an awkward draw coming up. We also get to. I could maybe impervious and retain some. I'm probably not going to, though. But yeah, calipers with a heart of iron is quite sweet. Nine metallicize is definitely helpful. Could do power through into fiend fire. Could just do power through. That lets us retain at least some block, right? We should at least power through. We'll have evolve in play. So this keeps enough block that we can block a beat of death, or we can just delete these cards, but I think impervious is worth keeping around here. So let's not. Retain 15 block in the next turn is pretty cool. Big hit is indeed first. Buffer looking very, very nice right now. And we can disarm to stop the multi-attack from being so bad next turn. Okay, so we want to go... That was skill, another skill, power.
guess we lose this shockwave. We're buffering this anyway. Next turn, you have no strength anyway. So yes, this looks like our energy potion turn. We can play Disarm, then Sentinel, then Sever Soul. So we destroy Shockwave Burn here. And yeah, we do have one more Shockwave in the draw pile. Although it's not going to be that much weak and vulnerable if we just play it in isolation. It ought to be enough. I think we're fine here. Yeah, let's lose those debuffs. Is a mere 1 by 15. I guess we just play the demon form, yeah? Could Sever Soul instead. Get rid of a bunch of stuff right now. This is surely more damage in the long run. want to miss playing Evolve or Juggernauts, so let's just play Corruption, Feel No Pain, and nothing else here. Miss the Shockwave. That's a lot of damage. deal a bunch back with the bronze scales. And we still have a lizard tail, after all. Amongst other things. Time to delete some cards. Bean fire, go! some of that. Let's do all of the block cards then. And I'll use Sever Soul. No, we just play this, right? Attain over a hundred block. Still have Lizard Tail. Seems good. Get destroyed, sir. GG. Be free, my lizard tail friend. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And don't forget to follow on Twitch to watch the content live. Click the link in the description below.